Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Best Practices in the Deployment of NFB Infrastructure. Uh, my name is Julio Villarreal Pellegrino. Uh, right now, I am a principal architect with the cloud practice of Red Hat. Some of my responsibilities are to actually go and implement OpenStack on the field. And I've been working with a lot of telcos in the last couple of years. And I'm really glad to see a couple of my customers in the room today. Thank you, Julio. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Stefano Freire. I run the cloud practice at Red Hat, and I'm uh, Julio's minion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, we just started um, this uh, session here with a, a poll for everyone. So, the question we have to start, and if you can use your app to respond, do you have direct responsibilities in your business enterprise network? We want to assess the audience here, whether we have more network people than other type of people, and want to find out about this. So take we your have, time. We have a couple of responses already coming in. I have like 57% yes. Well, 50 on 50, 56, 60, okay. This is looking good. I want more network people. It's moving, okay, 50-50. Okay. We have some, someone there doing a lot of yes and no, yes and no, you know, messing with us. <laughs> but we're we really glad to see that we have an audience of people that actually have responsibility over the networks and network services on their companies. Oh, <laughs> this is my company VPN asking me to scroll some key. Okay, so fairly split audience here. Yep. Um, so, Let's just go ahead and uh, start about our session. So um, as we start, I'd like you to let us know in one word what you think the purpose of NAV is for your activities in your, in your business. It's hard, it's in one word, so if you want to use multiple words, use iPhone, otherwise the words are gonna be split all over there. Yes, and, and you could repeat the word, right? If, you, if what you believe is already on the screen, please feel free to type it. I love the magic one. You know, I'm all about that one. Streamlining. Career, yeah, that's a... More Bonus. money. Automation. Uh, automation is taking precedence. Yeah, automation is taking precedence. That's good. More money. Oh, people love money in this room. I like that too. Virtualization, magic, and automation. Competition, right? Maybe I'll we have some people from telco here. Pain. Okay. We have some telco people in the room. So you, you guys are describing the purpose of NFB right now. You know, what NFB means to you. And in some of the, of the cloud of words that we have here, we have magic number one. <laughs> and yes, we, we, love, we love magic. We, we love to provide you a service that you could just click one button and everything happens. We have a lot of automation. We have time to market, really important one. We have provisioning. So I think that we need to jump because we're going to... Julio, it says there, like I see Julio there. Your name is showing up. Oh, one of my customers is in the room. This is good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's go ahead with the NFV. Network function virtualization, right? So what is it for those people that are not involved with network? It's the art of decoupling your network functions from the underlying physical network infrastructure. It's basically moving traditional network functions that are usually deployed in proprietary hardware to something that is gonna be software or virtual. And the goal is to do that on general purpose x86 type of, type of hardware, very important. So the idea there is to, to get some benefits out of this. So what is the biggest driver for NFV adoption in your enterprise? Again, we're going here and polling you guys and tell us what's the drivers for you. Yeah, we want to make this a conversation, you know, and, and this is a way for us to, to gather data at the same time and to see what actually driving the, the adoption of network function virtualization in your company. Right. While this, when this poll happens, like how many of you work on the telco. Let's do like, like an old school poll with the hand. 
I, I know you, Jay, work on telco. Yeah, I know you, Corey, work on telco. So I know a couple people on the telco space here in the room. So it's a majority, I think. Yeah. Thus. All right. Hey, nobody's got scalability issues. That's cool. Hey, they work on telco. All right, so we see that the winner here, lack of flexibility for being the biggest driver. And we got high cost. Vendor lock-in, I think it's very important. And slow innovation. Okay. So let's just go around all these topics. Anybody familiar with that picture there on the right side? You know, that's what we see in many enterprises, obviously not in telco, telco is perfect. You know, we get all these things. But one of the main driver for NFV is, you know, we have a lot of proprietary hardware, a lot of, um, I would say, legacy systems that have been basically ruling the, the world in the telco space. And these represent millions and millions, sometimes, you know, dozens and hundreds of millions of dollars of investments for, you know, in the telco space, but it's also true in the enterprise. This hardware does not necessarily have the flexibility in today's world. Cloud is about on-demand, self-services, and uh, the lack of flexibility and the, basically the obligation for the consumers of IT to go through the network guy to get their fire rules, their load balancer rules, or anything. That is really uh, the old way of doing things. So the lack of flexibility is also an impediment for, to respond, for, for businesses to respond to the demand. Scalability issues. Well, to, to be able to scale you know, and respond to high traffic loads, you need to be able to be elastic around your workloads. And that applies, obviously, to compute, but also to network. Slow innovation. Well, with, with a way to basically provide on-demand and self-services um, compute network and storage infrastructure, then you're able to allow your developers to innovate faster. So that's also a big driver. Finally, vendor lock-in. Well, why vendor lock-in? Well, the idea is, you know, with these investors, you want to use open standards so that you can drive your innovation faster and um, um, basically uh, allow yourself to drive through standards. What are the benefits? Obviously, reducing the capital cost. Um, there's a, as I mentioned, a lot of um, capital spending um, allowed to reduce the need to purchase purpose-built hardware and supporting pay-as-you-go models to eliminate wasteful over-provisioning. OPEX, there's a lot of space, power, cooling, you know, a lot of operational costs. When you virtualize that, all this goes away. Let me, let me ask a question here. Really. How many of, of, of you are already dealing with the truck day, you know? Like, I need to deploy a new service into my telco, and I need to wait for the truck to come in with, you know, with, like, my huge appliance, and then I need to get everything ready for it, you know? I need to do my cooling math. I need to say, okay, I have enough power for this big appliance, and then get the operator to bring, and the integrator to bring the appliance into your room, into, into your telco data center, and plug that in. And at the end of the day, that's, that, that, that's an operational cost, too. So yeah, and so on, along the same line, you know, how do you reduce your time to implement things, right? You know, you see you have a project here, you know, developers, they need to deliver yesterday. You know, how long is it gonna take? So this flexibility of the ability to accelerate your time to market, reducing the time to deploy, all those are great factors. Uh, agility, flexibility, uh, quickly scaling up or down services to address changing demands, supporting the innovation by enabling services, that's huge benefits for uh, NFV. Okay, so what are we here uh, in the marketplace? 83% of our telco operators demand, essentially focus on telco, prefer open systems for their network. And among this population of telco operators, 95% of them see open source as a positive attribute for NFV of solutions. So why open standards? Well, because you don't want to be, get locked in with those vendors, and you want to be able to take your own destiny in your proper hands. So Red Hat is very committed to open source. Uh, basically, all of our products are, have a project upstream that is uh, basically funded. And uh, we have, you know, we started with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which 
is the foundation for pretty much all the innovation at Red Hat. We have control on this operating system. Um, we obviously have uh, the RDO project, which is the upstream project for the Red Hat distribution. Uh, that is uh, for OpenStack. And uh, most importantly, uh, there's more innovation coming in the uh, software-defined network space with Open Daylight. So Open Daylight is becoming, you know, among other uh, SDN projects, our open platform for network programmability, innovation, uh, essentially on software-defined networking. So what does the uh, NAV architecture look like? So your virtual infrastructure management, the, so the, the red pieces are basically uh, the pieces that Red Hat has control on. But with our partners and the ecosystem of partners at Red Hat, we're able to deliver a complete NFV vision and architecture. So the VIM piece is uh, basically at the bottom right corner, uh, and that represents by OpenStack. But uh, we also have other pieces, like the SDN controller. Uh, Red Hat does not, I would say, yet fully control this space. You know, we work with partners. You know, you heard about Juniper Contrail. You, you, you've heard, probably heard about New Age Networks or um, even uh, Midokura and there's uh, other solutions. Uh, our out-of-the-box SDN solution is uh, OVS uh, and there's uh, different ways to, to, to skin that cat. But essentially, um, on, uh, on the, op or I would say, telco base, there's also all the other pieces that are very important to, uh, to the telco space. So we talk about VNF manager, the analytics piece, security, service assurance, service orchestration, network orchestration, and a service catalog overseeing these pieces there on the right side. So um, the idea with uh, this uh, OpenStack platform is to be able to manage your compute, resource, networks, storage, and have that as the base platform for the innovation on the VNF side. All right, so now let's get into OpenStack and NFV in particular. I, I hope everyone to say yes here because we are at OpenStack Summit. 100% so far. Well, that's one person. Okay. Four. Oh, there is one that say no. And that's okay. Hey, good opportunity, you know? Like, we, we, we hope to change that perspective <laughs> with this presentation. Oh, I didn't expect that. We have a 62% to actually 57 to 43 now. 60, 40, okay. Cool, let's get to the next question. So, NFV might not be a use case for everybody, right? So, what, why are you, open, why are you using, using OpenStack? Obviously, if, you, if it's, NFV is not your use case, if you don't want to provide virtual network functions, what are they? I mean, they can be network functions. Uh, and, and there is another thing, like, like every time that we talk about NFB, we talk about the telco, but NFB is really relevant on the enterprise and on the education sector, you know? I, I, I done projects with universities that they are implementing NFB features for HPC computing. It's not only a telco thing. Cost, okay. So I think the cost is the cost, open, rapid, rapid, yeah. rapid innovation. Standard framework for money. Cloud. I see money there again. Enterprise. Yeah. Money. APIs. I like that one. Scalability, flexibility. So why use um, OpenStack as your network function virtualization infrastructure? You could do it without it, but we think that you're better off with this because you can also address most of your needs you know, for your enterprise. So what are the advantages of OpenStack versus traditional virtualization? Everything is modular. You have multi-tenancy. You have shared pooled resources. You can plug your storage network from basically any vendors. It's all open, right? Vendors have highly contributed with their drivers being able to do that. Very rich API feature set and a very vibrant community. 
Now let's, let's talk a little bit about the BIM, about the virtualized infrastructure manager, and, that, and that's, that's one of our biggest push here. And this is where we see that OpenStack actually filled the space. As Stefan was showing before, we could put together pretty much the complete ecosystem between Red Hat and our partners. But why OpenStack as a BIM? Uh, individual modular OpenStack components could provide you these capabilities. And, and, and the idea is that using OpenStack to manage compute networking and storage resources is, is what will give the telco or any other company using OpenStack for network function virtualization the agility to innovate, to deploy, and to control their environments in an easier way. So using OpenStack as a beam, you will be able to map physical resources to virtual resources. In, in this case, uh, provide the asset service component for, for, your, for your different uh, requirements. Uh, another way that OpenStack helps is a really secure way of resource sharing across multiple tenants. Uh, when we go and talk to some of our telco customers, some of the telco customers are, are doing OpenStack for one tel telco tenant. You know, I have this, uh, B, uh, this virtual IMS tenant that I'm going to onboard, and this is my only use case. We have other telco, te uh, telco customers that they are doing multiple tenants with their OpenStack infrastructure. They say, no, you know, I want to have an IMS, I want to have uh, routing infrastructure, I want to have CPE, uh, VC, yeah, VEPC. I, I, want to, I want to onboard different kind of tenants. So OpenStack provides that capability of onboarding different kind of tenants for NFB workloads into your cloud. Uh, and you could enforce quota management as part of it. You know, like provide a quota to your tenant. You know, you can you only use this amount of resource that I am allocating to you. Or I can modify that quota in order for you to scale out or scale back. Uh, with, with OpenStack as a beam, you also will have a, a resilience and highly available control plane. You know, like in the way that we are deploying OpenStack on the field, we take the, the approach of deploying a highly available control plane as the base for OpenStack. What happens if you lost your API? You know, what, what will be the impact of, 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 of losing an API endpoint? So that's why a resilient control plane is really important when you are deploying a beam. And not only for OpenStack, but for any other beam that you want to deploy on your telco or, or in your enterprise. Uh, APIs, this is super important. Uh, right now, uh, what we see on the field is like most of the most of the, of the network vendors, they come with a set of API calls. That, that's how the deployments are happening right now. When you bring your partner into your room and you say, oh, okay, I'm going to implement this, and this is my beam, they're gonna come most likely with the heat template. Okay, here is my deployment mechanism. This is my image, this is my heat template. So OpenStack is going to provide you that, and that's the way to go. You should go to a way that you could automate your deployment, that you could control everything from an infrastructure as a code approach in an automated fashion. And it will also provide mechanisms to collect full and performance data for physical and virtual resources. The telco world metrics are a really important thing. You know, how you get metrics out of everything, utilization, uh, uptime, uh, throughput, all those kind of metrics, you will be able to collect them with OpenStack. Now, that, that's, that's one part of the big puzzle that we, that, that we showed before, is the beam. But the Bing is not the only important infrastructure part when you are going to deploy NFB applications. Another big part of an NFB application deployment is the SDN. So by default, out of the box, Neutron is the SDN provider that we use in our OpenStack platform, and that OpenStack uses by default, by the way. So the ability that Neutron provides you of supporting VLAN, VXLAN, GRE, will make you flexible enough to be able to deploy certain NFB workloads by, the, by default on the application without having to onboard an external third-party SDN. Now, if you want to onboard a third-party SDN, most of the SDNs out there, they have a point of integration with OpenStack, and that's a really important thing to do. But Neutron out of the box will provide you with that. Now, if, as I was saying, if you want to go for a more commercial SDN, and we partner with many of those, if you want to, to bring any of those, that will be vendor dependent, but you need, to, you need to have a use case that you could qualify. Okay, why I am bringing this SDN? And, and, and remember, the SDN 
conversation is probably the most important conversation that you could have when you are onboarding OpenStack as an NFB uh, beam in your, in your company because everything at the end will be dependent on that SDN choice that you did. Can I integrate my IT systems into this SDN? You, you, will, you will have to ask yourself many questions during that process. Now, storage, that, that's the other important part. You know, we talk about the beam. Now we talk about the SDN and the networking side, but you also need to, to consider the storage. Uh, for what we are doing on the field, we have two big things that we are driving. Number one is through Ceph, and that doesn't mean that need to be our Ceph. You know, Ceph is an open source project, nobody owns Ceph. So, um, um, for what we've seen in OpenStack deployments, most of our OpenStack deployments out there are using Ceph. Why they are using Ceph? Open source, like highly scalable, reliable, built in redundancy. And you could use Ceph not only for your glance image, but also for your cinder volumes, for your Nova ephemeral workloads. That, that's, that's a one way to go when you are deploying a, 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 a cluster with, with OpenStack for your storage backend. The other way is what about using what I already have on my data center? What about using my old SAN or my old NAS and integrate that into my OpenStack deployment for BNF workload? You could do that. And we, we see a lot of people doing that. The, the, the gotcha about it is that you need to make sure that what you're integrating is totally certified, that, you, that the vendor has support for OpenStack, that it could provide you with a driver for it. But you could go both ways here. Now, let's talk about performance. You know, performance consideration, uh, consideration for NFB workloads. And, and this is super simple. And as I was saying before, this not only applies to telcos. This applies to any enterprise that want to take advantage of these features. So end-to-end -end service performance is achieved through individual components and the optimization of these individual components on your platform. Now, how are we doing that? Now, on the compute side, when you are deploying NFV workloads, you need high-performance compute. You need to take advantage of high-performance compute components. In order to do that, what we, what we recommend is the, the EPA features. It's the Enhanced Platform Awareness feature. The EPA features are really simple. And what we are doing, we are carrying that up from the Linux kernel and in order to be implemented in OpenStack and take advantage of huge pace in order to allow uh, to use larger page sizes for the guests that are running on the hypervisor. We are taking advantage of CPU pinning as part of our, uh, of, of our uh, NFB-centric installations. Uh, CPU pinning will allow the workloads to be more aligned with certain physical resources in your hypervisors. We also point to thread affinity as part of CPU pinning and to NUMA awareness. So do you actually want to cross a QPI? on an application, you know, grab a resource and, oh, I have to talk to the other memory bank or I want to get something from the other CPU to orchestrate this workload. That, th those things are going to degrade your performance. So these basic things, some people don't think about it, but they are critical and key where you are deploying NFB workloads. Is how I'm going to use these features that being there forever as part of our, uh, as part of the Linux kernel, and how I'm going to take them and make them production ready for my OpenStack NFB workloads. Uh, the, the, other, the other part is when you are going to the data plane. It's like, okay, uh, I did my compute, my compute is fine, but now let's go into the data plane. Uh, what kind of, of support I need throughput-wise? You know? Do I need to be real close to, to, to bare metal performance? Then when you are going to be real close to bare metal performance, you have to look into features like SRIOV, PCI pass-through. You know, like I'm going to grab this virtual function and I'm going to provide it directly into the instance that I'm going to run. Or I'm going to grab the complete PCI card and I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to give 40 gigs of throughput to this baby. Maybe you don't need to do that, but maybe you need to do that. So we see everything on the field. Okay. And then we have other technologies. We have a DPDK enabled OBS. Like it won't get you to, it won't get you as close as line rate as it will get you, as PCI pass through or SRIOV, but it will get you really, really close. 
And at the end of the day, the important part is to understand your use case and your workload, and how are you going to match that with OpenStack as the beam in this case. Uh, the, the other part that, that, the, that the data plane will provide you is some sort of network QoS, you know, up from the OpenB switch all the way to your, to your physical infrastructure. Never forget your physical infrastructure. I talk to a bunch of customers, and some of them are like, well, I want to virtualize, and I want to have everything open and stuff because I don't want to manage networking. You know, uh, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you still need to manage networking. You still need to design your network. Not because you're going to have an SDN mean that you don't have to take care of your network design. That, that's an important part. Uh, another approach and a best practice is to monitor things. Like, please monitor your OpenStack infrastructure or any beam that you are using. Some of our customers only want to monitor the application running, the VNF, but they forget to monitor the, the OpenStack cluster. It's super important to monitor your OpenStack cluster. Monitoring your OpenStack cluster and then monitor also your VNF and whatever you're putting on top on it will provide you not only an understanding of what are you running, but a correlation between your whole stack. And that's where you want to be. You want to, to do log aggregation not only for your application, but for your whole stack, for your hardware, for your open stack components, and for your BNF. Because if you are running an issue, your people, your operation people, your day two people, are going to be able to troubleshoot that in, a, in an easier and faster way by doing log correlation, by doing a lot of, of operations magic behind it. Uh, open source auctions that we, that we are proposing, you know, we are a big proposing of Elasticsearch, uh, FluentD as part of our stack, uh, Kibana. Uh, we have also some Nagios uh, compatibility with one of our older release. And um, we also believe that you should have the ability to integrate and monitor with your existing tools. I'm going to do traditional SNMP uh, logging. I'm going to do uh, syslog or R syslog. But it's an important conversation to have. And this is a pretty picture that I grabbed from the, from the Red Hat website about it. Sample, US, uh, sample NFB use cases. Uh, the, as I said before, everything is down to your use case. And how are you going to answer your use case with your platform? And your platform architecture should match your use case. Now, I have customers that they say, I want to have one architecture, and I'm going to ask my BNF vendors to adhere to that architecture. That's one way to do it. And then you design a really high performance architecture that could take all kinds of use cases. And there are others that they take a use case centric architecture where they say, I'm going to design for my VEPC application. And I have this and this requirement for my VEPC application, and that's part of my design. Or I'm going to design for my VIMS application, or for my routing application, or my IPS IDS application. So you could take either way while you are doing your design. But the important part is that your architecture needs to match that use case. Please do not adopt OpenStack because it's the cool, trendy thing. Adopt OpenStack because you actually have a use case that you could fix and match it with OpenStack. Putting everything together, I, I, I'm talking a lot, and I want to have time for questions at the end, I promise. So putting, putting it all together with Red Hat. Uh, Red Hat OpenStack platform. This is a little bit outdated since today <laughs> because we are releasing the version 11 of our version of our OpenStack platform today. So great news and a couple of people in this room is responsible for putting that together. Thank you. Uh, so OpenStack, as I've been saying, is our beam right now that we are, that we are positioning in the, in the telco market. Why? Because it's highly modular, because it's open source, as I was saying. So this is OpenStack Platform 10, some of the components on OpenStack Platform 10. So just imagine how you're going to get that use case for your telco application or for your HPC use case or for your enterprise uh, with high network demand application, and you are going to fit in here to, to get the answers to that use case. And, that, and that's what we are doing, and that's, that's the kind of conversation that we have with our customers every day, is how can we help you with our tooling to make that use case resolve, you know, like to, to, to provide you a platform to run that use case. Now, why, why OpenStack for, why Red Hat OpenStack for NSB features? And please notice that I am really specific about Red Hat OpenStack platform. 
Why are we doing this? Uh, number one, we, are, we deploy a highly available platform. So our deployment is highly available by default. And, and that's, that, that's, our, that, that's our supported deployment. It's a highly available control plane. Uh, number two, and this is super specific for, for um, and I see this more drive on the telco, is the composable roles. Composable roles is a feature that we are introducing with our installer that you could install different kind of roles. And when I mean a role, you could have, you, you could deploy a, a compute with SRIOV and, and have a role for that. Or you could deploy a compute with DPDK and have a specific role for that. So at the end of the day, your deployment will have multiple roles depending on the kind of application that you want to run in that hypervisor. Uh, the other part is like the EPA that, uh, that I was talking before, you know, like the, the enhanced platform awareness. By default, we have the tooling uh, in the code of our installer to, the, to enable all this by default. So you could, by, by using our director, our Red Hat OpenStack in, uh, director uh, installer, you could enable all this by default. Uh, we have also SRIOV from scratch there. We have uh, support, uh, director support for OBS DPDK. Uh, we have open daylight right now on a tech preview, at least on 10. We have a real-time KVN on a tech preview. So if you want to have like a really high-performance hypervisor, you could get that with, with real-time KVN. And we also have a, a, a supported ACI, hyperconverged infrastructure. And this is a use case that we see on the telco for the edge offices. You know, like I want to have like a small uh, consolidated cluster on my edge location, and you could put that there, and you could put together uh, a storage and compute on the same nodes. Uh, besides that, we have other open stack features like Nova device role tagging, and we have uh, VLAN aware VMs right now on, on the preview on 10. Now for the storage side, I know you guys remember, we talk about compute, networking, and then storage, and our recommendations. Our answer to that right now is Ceph. Uh, we are, uh, we are really, we are, we, we, I love Ceph. I've I been a Ceph lover before it was an acquisition made by Red Hat of Intank. So if, if you want to get the highly distributed storage, Ceph is, a, is, is, is one of the way to go. And within the OpenStack community, it's, it's really like it and, and deploy it. If you could go and see the latest uh, versions of the, of the OpenStack foundation pools, you will see that Ceph is one of the of, of the big choices of deployment, and that's what we are pushing. But besides that, uh, as I said, we certify and integrate with multiple uh, third-party SAN and NAS for our OpenStack platform. CloudFonts, um, I want to talk about this one because I'm a big fan, um, and I put it there. Uh, how many of you know what is CloudFonts? Right at CloudFonts? Okay, <laughs> only a couple of you. Uh, please take a look to that. Red Hat Cloudform is, we, we have an open source community-based product called Manage IQ. Red Hat Cloudform is a product that we uh, made out of that uh, open source uh, project. So day two operations, how many of you are operators here? Okay, couple operators. This is what people don't want to talk about. When people adopt cloud computing, they say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the cloud. Yeah, but when you are on the cloud, what are you gonna do in your cloud? How are you going to manage your cloud? CloudFonts is crucial in our approach to manage OpenStack. Why? Because you could do a single pane of glass experience. You could gather metrics. You could, you could, you could see performance in your, in, your, in your under cloud and in your over cloud. And those are Red Hat centric terminology for our distribution, but some of you know what I'm talking about. You could get dashboard. You could get custom dashboard. You could do automation of your application stack. Right now, uh, we announced last week the fully support of Ansible as part of Red Hat CloudFonts. That means that you could manage end-to-end -end OpenStack and you could also orchestrate and automate with Ansible within CloudFonts for OpenStack. Back to Ansible again. So, and, and you could replace this with whatever you're using right now on your enterprise. You are Red Hat, so we are an, Ans we are an Ansible company. But, but why Ansible? Uh, and I have this conversation with people in this room already. So some of, some of, some of you 
we talk about this already. Why, why to use an orchestration and an automation tool as part of your NFB deployment? How are you going to manage the life cycle of your application? How are you going to update? How are you going to scale up and down? Ansible could be the answer for that. And Ansible is simple, it's powerful, and it's agentless. So that, that's, why, that's why we think that Ansible is a right fit for as, as an orchestrator, as an automation tool, we think open stack for any kind of workloads, to be honest. Operational tools. So operational tools, we got full support of clients for reality monitoring. So we, the, our radar distribution comes with agents, right? We also, so we integrate with any customer tools, but at the, uh, at the end of the day, what we want to provide is the data, all the metrics, all the data you need to be able to operate your platforms. So for, uh, I would say, availability, we have Sensu, a Sensu agent that you can plug into your uh, Sensu console, but we have Fluentd for uh, ag log aggregation and log correlation. Uh, we do also have reference implementation. So sometimes you say, hey, Red Hat, what do you have? We don't have. So we have that collection of tools that is available for you to build your own dashboards. So that's the Ops Tools Ansible project. So all these tools are being deployed by our Ansible tower. And we are able to just give you a fully comprehensive suite. Uh, it's, I mean, we don't support the whole stack. It's text preview. But you can at least build your dashboards until you get to production and until you integrate all this data into your own enterprise tools. Yes. Um, by the way, uh, kudos to the CentOS SIG because they've been maintaining that uh, Ops tool repository for the server side. So it's, it's full open source project, and you are really welcome to contribute. We're always looking for people to, to contribute to the community. Now, everything together. I, I know you remember this image from before. Um, it was like kind of red, blue, and gray. Now, how, how are we feeling the puzzle, you know? Uh, we have... Red Hat Satellite, Ansible, OpenStack Platform, you know, everything put together for the NFBI infrastructure. So, and also how we plug the partners here. You know, we have several partners as weaving on the, on the telco space. So, all those partners are usually pro our architecture within our beam and our environment. So that, that's pretty much how we fit everything together with Ceph, with OpenStack, with Ansible, CloudForms. So you could, you could see pretty much almost every product that we have in this slide. And, 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 that, and, that's, a, and that's a good use case. You know, we've seen this on the field. People actually deploying this kind of a stack for their NFB uh, workloads. How, how, are, how are we on time? We're fine? I think we're good. Because, because I think that we, are, we have time for questions right now. And we are using these two microphones. Anyone that wants to ask a question? Any questions about, the, about what we just talked about? That was just crystal clear, I guess. No, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a good feeling. <laughs> no questions? Well, if you have a question and you, are, and you don't want to do it right now, I will be around here, and I will be by the rehab booth. Uh, on the exhibit, please stop by. We have a lot of rehab people, experts on multiple technologies, and we will be more than glad to talk to you about anything uh, concerning rehab. Also about baseball, you know, we're in Boston, so about pretty much anything. Thank you very much for coming by, and have a great summit.